Hey fellow dreamers, Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. Just wanted to take a moment and wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful and happy Thanksgiving week. Uh, it is Thanksgiving weekend. It's a great time to look back and reflect and be grateful and thankful for all of the things we have in our lives. So I hope you do enjoy doing that. We intend to spend time with family. Uh, we'll certainly be uh, probably eating too much, watching American football and consuming a few beverages. So uh, hope you do the same and you have a great week. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out, but it's cold tonight. It's down to 43, and the water's a lot warmer, so there's just this amazing eerie fog coming off of the water all around us. So this night it got really cold. It was down in the, uh, the mid-30s in the middle of the night. Both heaters were running pretty hard on the boat, and about 2.33 in the morning, Deb got up to use the restroom, and she said, hey, I think I smell something burning. So I came out of the bed, and I, I didn't smell anything at all. I just couldn't smell it. She said it smelled a little bit stronger uh, near the nav station, so um, we checked everything out, couldn't find anything, went back to bed and figured it would be just fine. Uh, about five in the morning, the, um, the heaters kicked off, and I thought, well, they must have tripped the breaker, never put two and two together, and just kind of relaxed in bed and figured I'd get up when, uh, you know, when it was time. Like I said, that was early before, the, before it was time to get up, 4.35. Um, Got up in the morning and sure enough, uh, no power to the primary breaker for the um, air conditioning and heating units. So in this video, I'm going to show you what we ended up uncovering and why it was important for us to, one, trace the wires and get a better understanding of how the boat's electrical system was actually wired, which was not clear to me actually. Um, and then secondarily, how we went ahead and um, diagnosed what the issue was and came up with at least a temporary repair. If you had smell-o-vision here, you would be able to smell this. You can kind of see this it is crispy. And I need to track down what that was connected to. In order to go ahead and track down where the wiring runs in this boat and really understand its point of origin and where it actually runs through the boat, what it connects to, it's a system I'm not completely familiar with. I have two 30-amp circuits that go into the boat or two 30-amp service cords that go into the boat. I don't have two 30-amp panels and that concerns me a little bit. I have a single panel that's both combined AC and DC and given the year of this boat in 1978 I presume it only had a 30 amp um, panel in it. So on that panel I have a rotator selector switch that I can go from shore power to off to generator. Um, and that does appear to at least go shore to off. Don't know about the generator side. Um, so that part seems to be okay. There's also another small panel that is just seems to run the air conditioners and the circulation pumps, and it's a lockout type, so you can either have um, one breaker on, or when you're running a generator, you supposedly slide this little lever down, uh, and you can only turn on the, the air conditioners then off the generator, so it's one or the other, right? It couldn't be on for both. Um, what I'm not sure of is if one of these 30 amp supplies supplies just the air conditioners and the other supplies the panel, or if the two of them come inside the boat and are combined somehow in that rotator selector switch. This is what they call a tone generating kit. I bought this thing years ago, and ironically enough, haven't used it yet. But, but basically what you do is um, you have this small tone generating component, and you can either clip it onto, a, you clip, plug it into a telephone line or clip it to a wire itself. You put a battery in it, turn this on, and then this probe right here, you, um, you press the button and you actually touch to the out, outsides of all the different wires in the boat and it will beep when you touch the one that the um, tone generator is connected to. Uh, I'm going to make sure I turn off the inverter because I don't want to invert 110 uh, volts from 12 and potentially shock myself. I'm going to turn off all the breakers on the pedestal and I'm going to disconnect the lines on the, um, on the input to the boat. So I'm going to try this uh, tone generator out and see if I can actually find the routing of the wires, kind of where they go, uh, and more importantly, that question I just had around, does one power supply go to the panel and the other go to the, uh, the air conditioners? So that's going to be my project for today. So to test this out, I'm going to go ahead and connect it up to a shore power cord that's not in use just to see how well it works over a 50-foot uh, length. So let's get this connected. Turning it to tone. In order to give this a test, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to push my button here for my test. I'm going to touch it. Nothing. Nothing. And you can hear the tone. And, and 
It's a good thing. It's definitely the one that I hooked in that was not connected. So this is handy. This is going to tell me which wire it is. So you can kind of see how this would work. I'm going to be climbing on in here. Got a little light mounted in there already, but we'll see what we can get looking at in here. Well, we're going to start climbing in here and seeing what we can uncover. Um, this is the area where all these wires come in, and what I'm really trying to figure out here first is where is the 30 amp circuit actually coming to the boat? So I've got my tone generator here, and I have connected it um, outside to one of the receptacles on the boat itself. We'll see what we find here. Interestingly enough, that's what appears to have burned up. Let's see if you can see this. So I want to check this rotary switch. I'm going to pull this panel down. That exposes all the Raymarine components back here, but more importantly, I'm looking for the input from my shore power. Yesterday I took some time and I traced the wires and what I found was one of the 30 amp service cords comes into the boat and it goes to uh, the shore side of the rotary shore off generator switch. That's logical to me. The other wire goes from the shore power cord directly to um, this double pole panel that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it doesn't go through the panel, uh, the electrical panel at all, the large electrical panel. It goes directly to that one and I suspect that was added just to put the air conditioners on. I'll bet when this boat was originally built in 1978, it didn't have a, a separate circuit nor an air conditioner. They were probably both added after the fact and brought a second service in just to run those. That makes a little bit of sense to me as well. So anyway, we're about to go dive back in under the cabinet here and um, trace this wire that we found burnt. Uh, I got new wire for it, a small piece, just about a foot long is all I think I'm going to need. And then to make sure I don't have some other problem besides these contacts that I'm cleaning up, um, I'm going to use an infrared thermometer, and when I turn the power back on, I'm going to check the temperature of the wire and make sure that it doesn't begin to get hot from the resistance uh, building up, right, indicating some kind of potential short. So the step here is I'm going to remove this panel, give me easier access, get a better view of what the wiring looks like behind it, and while I can see it pretty good from inside the cabinet, it's hard to um, it's hard to get to the connections themselves. So I'm hoping there's enough slack here, and I can pull this panel out. I do not have a lot of slack on the wires, but I have enough get to the one I really need to. I just decided to shut off the house bank batteries as well, just to make sure that if this wire were to bump something in there that it wouldn't um, it wouldn't potentially hit something um, that's 12 volts and short it. I'm just gonna get this screw started so I don't drop this and then I'm gonna shift my hands around to where I can get to it a little easier. So it's important that I keep these all lined up. I'm going to use the, these pliers to kind of hold it in place while I tighten it up. All right, got the lug good and anchored. I'm going to slide this panel right back in place. All 
right. Got it connected on that side. So now it's inside to connect that piece. This wire here that was burned, and I've already done this, so I know which one it is. It goes right to there. And the good news is it's not any others, right? So it's not shorting against anything else, which is good. Um, this is the one that I need to connect it to. Okay? I believe what's happened is these connections in here, one were butt spliced and two are pretty darn corroded. And this wire right here, when I disconnect it from this lug, goes right up into this same bundle, comes around to here. I'm going to check the temperature of this when I turn it back on to make sure that I don't end up with some kind of another short. One of these wire connectors is already here, but I'm going to keep it a little bit loose and outside the rest of the bundle, mainly because I really want to, um, I want to monitor this thing and make sure that I don't want to go to a problem on my hands. solid ring terminal on here and we're going to tighten this down good it's 71 to 73 degrees 71 degrees and then I'm going to check it right the output side so they're all 71 degrees Kicked off, let's see what air conditioning does. Alright, just kicked over to air. Compressor kicked on. Pressure's running, I want to check the temperature again. I'm at 75, it's definitely a little warmer. So here's the parts that uh, were in here. You can see where it just completely melted this. It, it separated there. But I want to show you what I believe causes part of this is using non-marine parts. So take a look at that. Uh, it's just a butt splice, copper butt splice, I believe. I hope you found this video useful. I'm sure I'll see some uh, notes in the comments below about uh, the whole electrical system probably needing to be replaced, and I do not disagree. It's certainly on the priority list. But I did justify to myself that this has been running for two years. Um, it's not great, but I was going to patch it just the way it was. And I am starting to look at what a redesigned electrical system would look like in the boat, both for AC as well as DC power. As you can imagine, that's a pretty hefty project. So uh, I wanted to get this resolved the way it was and then slowly work on um, you know, that other project for replacing all the electrical wiring and the DC and the AC panel but I figure that could be next year without a problem. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any comments or you see something that I should have done differently, uh, by all means, please leave it in the comments below. And uh, do us a favor, go ahead and um, give us a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to them, and feel free to share them with your friends if you found them at all useful. So this is Gil from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser signing off. Have a good one, folks.